Schmidt beer, the brew that grew to be best in the Great Northwest. Your finest craft beer, Rocky. Man to man, smoke Roy Tan. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan coming at you ice cold and unfiltered. That is indeed us. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. I am Greg, or that's Scott. What's shaking? Oh, no. And that's <laughs> it. Yeah, what up? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah, too soon. <laughs> uh, welcome, in, everybody. Thanks for drinking along with us and listening to us. We are the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Uh, Big shout out to our top listening city of last week, which was Culver City, California. Oh, wow. It's where some movie studios are, so maybe they're taking note of the gentleman. Yeah. Going to do a uh, biopic or you know, like a lifetime <laughs> thing on the, on the Unfiltered Gentleman. Yeah, they're going to get uh, Jason Madzukas to play me up there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be uh, Jason Statham. <laughs> there you and, go. Uh, just He'll have to drop his accent. Other than that, spitting image. <laughs> I'll be that guy uh, with the big teeth that had the head motorcycle accident a while ago. Uh, I don't know who Big that teeth? is. Big teeth? Big teeth. Oh, he's a movie. That, fuck, I can't remember his name now. All right. Well, anyway, I'm sure you remember yeah. just as soon as the show's yeah, over. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks uh, to Culver City. Also, a special shout out to London. London was like a couple rows down on the they're like top really? five. And wow. So that was kind of cool. So uh, Chip Chip Cheerio. And uh, have fun hanging out with Archie. Isn't that the baby's name? The royal baby Archie or uh, something like that? Uh, sure. The newest of the royal babies. Yeah. 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 Just say sure. yeah. We'll sound smart. Of course, yeah. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for listening. Our burp word, I guess this is a burp phrase of the week, is oh, hell yeah. And we'll get to that in a little bit. You'll find out why. Uh, we have mm. a new beer review from a new friend. His name is Mike. we got some booze news to get to. We have Gary Busey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that name. Well, now you have Tourette's. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was going to say Nick Nolte first. Well, Either like, one. Oh, they're the oh, same yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they kind of are. That's yeah. true. They get confused quite often. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Sorry. Either one of them could yeah. play you. They could switch. One could be the stunt double. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Oh, all the stuff we're going to do today. we got a lot of crotch talk to get to, but everyone in here is looking quite thirsty. Oh, other mention. Thanks. Big thanks to John. From Upcountry Brewing last week for being on the show. If you didn't hear that interview, go back and have a listen. Uh, he talks about everything from starting a couple breweries to coming up early in the business, the 90s, back before it was Craft Brewery. Whoa. Selling out to Big Beer. Wow. Which uh, was fun to talk about. So go back and listen to Upcountry Brewing. If you didn't listen to Batch 156, please do that. All right, we're all parched. Enough of me. Let's get yes. to drinking. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. We are having ourselves a beer. It is Modern Times Critical Band IPA. 6.7% 75 IBUs. Has a 4.22 on Beer Advocate and a 4.02 on Untapped. From the brewery, they say this deeply juicy stunner in the mold of City of the Sun and Booming Rollers is brewed with Denali, Yukonot, Citra, Simcoe, and Mosaic hops. The result is a blast wave of pineapple, papaya, and pink grapefruit over a crisp, restrained malt bill before wrapping up in a soft, round finish that leaves you with warm feelings and an intense desire for another sip. What say you guys? Oh, man. It's good. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, yes. absolutely. This is uh, another great one from Modern Times. I found this at Trader Joe's, and for those of you who don't have Trader Joe's and don't know how magical they are, whenever they get beers, you can break off the four-pack or six-pack. You don't have to buy the whole thing. So if you want to try a new beer, it's oh, like, God oh, I'll just crack that op- off the uh, the pack there and bring it up. It's really cool, and that way you can try one before you buy the whole pack. And That's a good idea. Yeah, and so I did that with this one, and as soon as I took a sip, I was so fucking sorry I didn't buy the whole pack. <laughs> I cannot get enough of it. The next day, I went and got a four-pack of it. Oh, man. And uh, this is like my second or third pack You mean you left pack. the store before you drink it? Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, don't you? Uh, well, <laughs> On my way to the car. <laughs> <laughs> before I got the door, am I popping yeah. that thing open? Sir, not in here. <laughs> it's warm. I know. Uh, yeah, I cannot get enough of this one. I love it. This keeps going down so magically fast. I can't figure it out. Um, I definitely get a lot of the papaya and the pineapple and a little bit of that grapefruit. To me... It, it is a little cloudy. It's a little hazy. It's got some of those hazy juice qualities, but it it, it 
cleans up at the end and doesn't linger too much and you just yeah. want more of it. Yeah, it does have that kind of like juicy, hazy kind of taste to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got a little haze in, in appearance as well. Yeah, it's not real thick. Yeah, a little yeah. <laughs> little fog rolling in there. Uh, I cannot get enough of this beer. It's good. The the hops, it's just it's all around so well balanced. Look at all the hops we've got. <laughs> He'll knows what's up. And something uh, in there makes the makes it evaporate because it's like goes fast. <laughs> mm-hmm. You have to drink it before it's gone. Yeah, it must be the summer weather or it's something. Be something. <laughs> it's no longer in my glass. Whoa. Yeah. We'll it's have really beer weird. ring tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird how that works. So uh yeah, Modern Times Critical Band. If you guys See this at your local bottle shop, or if you're lucky enough to have a Trader Joe's near you, do yourselves a favor and pick this up. This is like my new beer of the summer, I think. I, I just can't stop drinking the heck out of this one. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's move ourselves on to some crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. It is indeed. A couple things to mention. First of all, out here local to us in Thousand Oaks, California, is a new brewery that's about to open called Tarantula Hill. They are being led by a former assistant brewer at Stone. His name is Mike. His last name is escaping me. And they had their soft open. Yeah. uh, Soft open last week. Unfortunately, they did not have any of their own beer on tap, but all guest taps. And so I went, checked out the new brewery. The space is awesome. It's big. They have a pizza section. They have an ice cream Mm. section. Of course, they have the beer section. There you go. Yeah. You got everything you need all in one spot. Cool. They got a great outdoor area. They have a little yard for the dogs to play around in. (laughs) Though uh, at the soft open, there were very few dogs and way too many kids. (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm telling you, man. Are they getting drunk? I wish. Maybe they would have shut the hell up. That's my number one complaint, dude. I know. Like, I see kids at breweries fairly often, but, like, not in large groups. It'll be like, you know, dad needed to take the edge off or something, so he brought the two in and brought them a game or an iPad, and they just sit there and they do their thing and maybe order from the future. If you're lucky. That's (laughs) that's what I normally see. This was a goddamn zoo Uh of children just run, And, you know, it's a brand new building, brand new landscaping. Everything's... I mean, the building's not new. They totally, you know, redid it, but... Uh Uh, everything, the landscaping, everything's new. These kids are running all over, like the landscaping, squashing plants, climbing on the fence. I mean, they're just being little shits. And honestly, I don't blame them. I blame their uh, their parents who aren't paying any course, fucking attention. Of course. But I don't. Oh my god, he's breaking things over there. I don't <laughs> need eighty children running around screaming and trampling everything that's there when I'm trying to enjoy a couple of delicious beverages. Exactly. It's uh, it's quite annoying. That's why I don't have kids. I enjoy my uh, peace and quiet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, we were really glad. We we didn't bring the dogs. We had never been there. We didn't know if they're dog friendly. We didn't know the setup and all that stuff. We were glad we didn't because it was so noisy. He would have just sat there, like, staring and freaking out the whole time. Just like, get your kids in check, please. Mm-hmm. It was super annoying. So, people at Tarantula Hill, <laughs> please get your goddamn kids in check. Yeah. Hey, give me a petition for no kids at breweries. I'll sign it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First one, first one in line to sign that one. Yeah. What happens if, like, say you have a kid someday? Uh oh. Or maybe you already hey, do. That's what growlers are for. There you go. <laughs> get your growler filled up. Go there home. Go. Face the music, buddy. Get yeah. that beautiful growler. Oh, from I thought the growler was for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, they get the bottle. My growler is my kid. <laughs> yeah. I bet that was in a seatbelt and everything on your way home. <laughs> it was exactly. Yeah. Wow. I've done yeah, that. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So that was Tranchel Hill. Great spot, though. Just uh, Sands Kids would have been yeah. fantastic. So. Yes. You know, speaking of Growler, earlier, earlier, later on in the show, I do have some Growler and Crowler education on oh. how to keep your beer oh, fresh. Oh yeah. And how long you can uh, let it sit in those things. So stay I like tuned it. For that. Um. That since would we. Help. Yeah. Since we had the interview last week with John from Upcountry, we didn't really get to talk about it. But uh, did you fellas feel the rolling? A little bit. A nice. little bit. Mm-hmm. I felt the first one. Yeah, I felt the second one. For those of you who don't know, out here in Southern California, what well, really in like Middle Eastern California, there was a, yeah. a six point four, I think it was, earthquake on the fourth of July around ten thirty in the morning, and then the next day was a seven point one. That was the big one. I did not. I don't think I felt the first one. The second one, I definitely felt. I was at uh, one of my favorite spots, Wade's Wines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Wade's Wines is a local, for those of you who don't know, uh, store out here. It's a liquor store, but they also have a tasting room. They have like 101 beers on tap, 40-something wines on tap. You can put together flights. You can have pints, whatever you want, glasses of wine. It's great because the lady friend can have some wine. I can have some beer. You can have whatever we want. They even just opened a spirits room. So you want to go do like a whiskey flight? You can do a whiskey flight. I feel like I'm doing a commercial for them. And we're sitting there, and I just ordered a new flight. It was my second flight. 
and she and uh, the guy sets it off, sets it off, sets it down. English is hard. And all of a sudden, I was like, "What the hell?" And both the lady friend and I start looking around like something's happening. And then it lasted for so long that we had the time to go like, "Oh, this is an earthquake." And then the table next was like. Hey, yeah, we're having an earthquake. And they were with parents <laughs> who had never experienced an earthquake. They're like, oh, and they started to freak out. I was like, yeah, we're having an earthquake. Oh, there's a whole thing of like barrels right above our head. Maybe we shouldn't stay <laughs> under it. Yeah. We kind of laughed about it. Like, yeah, we're still under it yeah. for like five more seconds. And then slowly <laughs> made our way out from under it. Like, it's very California of us. Yeah. yeah. And then, so we got out from under the barrels. I had time to go, oh, the dog's at home alone. Get my phone out, open up the app, check the camera to make sure he wasn't like freaking out or anything. Good news is he wasn't, so we were fine. Then had another few seconds to sit there and go, oh, yeah, earthquake's still going, huh? Like, I <laughs> swear it lasted for at least 45 seconds to a minute. Really? Yeah, it, I felt it for so long. So this was <sighs> in Muslake, and the earthquake was in Ridgecrest. So I don't know, probably like 150 miles kind of as the crow flies away. I heard that the further away you are, kind of the longer it lasts because the roller the rolling comes in rolling. Yeah. It's not like a big shake. So not the farther away, but to an extent. But so yeah. that was our, yeah, we were drinking. So he set the flight down and uh, waited for the earthquake to stop, which to me felt like I'd been on a boat all day. Like <laughs> it kind of gave me like shaky legs from being on a boat. Boats and hoes. That's right. <laughs> and as uh, soon as it was over. I'm on and- a boat. The dog was fine. We uh, got back to drinking our beers. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. You guys... Uh, have any fun party stories about the earthquake? <laughs> I don't know about party. I know the first one. Uh, I kind of I felt that one more than the second one. I think. Oh, uh, the I fir- was working. I was moving oh, around. No, I was. I kind of stumbled back into bed somehow, <laughs> and uh, and it was just kind of like shaking my bed. I'm like, there's no women in my bed today. <laughs> like, what's going on here? Or is there? Buddy? Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's checking my sheets, but yeah, yeah one of those yeah. nights. Yeah, nothing there. Um, but then I think the next day too, like. Uh, uh, my supervisor from Phoenix or whatever, like, had like texted like me and a couple California employees, and like, is everyone okay? There was an earthquake, <laughs> and I'm like, it's 6 p.m. I don't know you right now. Like, right. I'm off work. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't really feel that one. Interesting. I, mean, I think I kind of like, I don't know. I was kind of. I think I got. I was showering to get ready for the night or whatever, mm-hmm. and I may have like when I got out of the tub like maybe felt dizzy and was like oh shit i think that was an earthquake i I must be pre-gaming too hard (laughs) yeah but i was also like naked so i was like well i can't really go anywhere (laughs) so i'm just gonna ride this one out and stay in here you could have uh, helped your neighbors. There's a little free show. Just run out. <laughs> yeah, just go run outside freaking Anyone out. Anyone need any ah, help? Yeah. Yeah. You can put the fire out. Yeah. Don't mind me. I'm just sans clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't pulled that oh, one out. Oh, damn it. That was a good opportunity. <laughs> that would have been, that. yeah. Sans yeah. clothes. Yeah. Oh, sans clothes during the earthquake. Love it. Yeah. I don't know. Scott, any uh, I didn't party? feel the second one. I was driving. The okay. first one was in the morning, and uh, we were at, the wife and I were at the store, and she gets these dizzy things every now and then, and it's that's I think every she, time you uh, say hello, y- yeah, 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 pretty much. And I, Contact she, at drunk. first, that's what she thought it was because she touched my arm and she started to say, "I'm dizzy." She goes, "I'm wait a minute, what's going on?" And then I I hadn't felt it yet, and then all of a sudden I kind of felt it. Mm, so I'm oh, like, wow. oh, just just write it out." Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. exactly. The, the main thing I do in an earthquake, especially when it's a long one, like that one's like 30 seconds. At least. I, I watch the ceiling and I watch other people. Correct. Yeah, I, make sure the ceiling's not coming down. No, yeah, make sure nothing's falling and yeah. make sure nobody's, you know, freaking out and about ready to, you know, knock me over right. running for the door or something. Yeah. Other than that, I just like stand there and say, do, 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 do. Yeah. And, and if people okay, do start over. running, that's when you run for the beer aisle. That's right. Yeah. 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 Save the beer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, out here in California, if you don't hear it, it's not a big deal. It's true. Right. You know? it, yeah. It's just like yeah. a little shaky. Okay, that's not so bad. When you're, grrr, it's like, oh shit, yeah. here it comes. When you hear the ground rumble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which we, yeah, we didn't hear any rumbling. No. We just, all of a sudden, the, the ground started moving. It mm. felt like we were on a boat. Yeah. I was talking to my sister back east, and she had, she used to live here, but she hasn't been here in years. She's like, it seems like so scary. I go, hey, you know, you just kind of ride it out and just wait yeah. for it to stop. I mean, yeah. I would I would much rather deal with these earthquakes than like tornadoes. I was going to say, oh, man, yeah, man. yeah, small price to pay for uh, what's it called for beautiful weather and right, you know, sunshine and ocean and everything, beaches, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's I don't know, like you said, I think a uh, tornado, hurricane. Like I was telling you, know, talking to my super, I was like, it's not a hurricane, you know. Right, I mean? yeah. It's like I'm fine. It went through. <laughs> it's gone. You know, and like I, I think what was it? I think uh, no, it was the. Uh, 
they canceled the summer league games in Las Vegas. Yeah. Right. I laughed so yeah, hard. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's not a hurricane. It's like, it's not going to come back. It's right. over. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's Do you done. think fall? You're yeah. fine. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. And they weren't even near the epicenter. Exactly. They were hundreds of miles away. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was so funny. The Dodgers were playing. Yeah. And they... They kept playing. It was yeah, Dodgers it was funny. Padres. It was like nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they even pitched in the middle of the earthquake. The camera was shaking, and Oral Hershiser was doing commentary. He's like, "Well, yep, I think <laughs> we're having an earthquake." Yep. It's like that's how most of California feels. Yeah. Even the, even the you notice the people in the stands they weren't freaking out, and they're just no. like, "Yeah, whatever." Well, too, yeah. it was the Padres and the Dodgers, right? Two California teams. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, "Yeah, whatever." Yeah, it would have been a different story if it was, you know, like Philly or something. Yeah. <laughs> and they, and they all be running off the field. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> half, half the field starts running off. Yeah, exactly. That would be hilarious. Oh, man. Yeah, the lady friend's sister, who born and raised, has only lived in California, mm. lives up north right now, texts her and was like, are you guys okay? And then calls her, like, freaking out. Are you guys okay? Are you fine? Are you guys, are you doing okay? She's like, you're from here, too. <laughs> and they're from NorCal. They lived through the 89 quake when the it was like uh, uh, A's and, and Giants in the World Series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their dad was at that game when it happened. <laughs> and they you know they lived through that, and she's freaking out about this. I was like, come on. Yeah. You, you got to get your priorities straight here. So, uh, yeah, so that was the earthquake. If anybody uh, from outside of California wants to know what it feels like, yeah, boat rocking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this one, at least. Yeah. I'm we'll sure a little like worse that. for the people near the Yeah, epicenter. I was going to say, people in the cities that were you know, were a center, they mm-hmm. might have a little different view on it but you know yeah i mean we're so earthquake prepared out here the only like real damage besides besides mobile homes that kind of doesn't count for damage because we all know <laughs> those are just gonna like <laughs> first things that always tornado hurricane earthquake what does it matter what it is it's going nature up. hates mobile homes it does it yeah. really does ironically but the most religious people are yeah. always in mobile homes yeah <laughs> god hates them um the, besides that, there was like two houses where the gas line broke and it caught on fire because of the gas line, not because of the earthquake. Like that was really the only destruction. And that was near the epicenter. It's like, yeah, you know, we're we're prepared. We yeah. have, we have building codes. Exactly. So uh, yeah, it's really strict building codes now. Yeah, I mean there I mean, always since, has been. The, yeah, I think mostly since '94 when the huge one we had, and you know things were freeways pretty fell. freaked out. And, yeah, you know, that was up. that was crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. but since it, then, yeah, they made some new. You know, building codes or whatever so things are pretty i mean i mean if you get a huge one there's you know what are you gonna do right so you gotta either write it out or don't yep so write, right, it, out, write it out or die yeah that's a new that's t-shirt right, right. <laughs> it's been diesel <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> write it out or die one one earthquake at a time one less right <laughs> <laughs> uh all right that's that's all i got anybody uh any grievances for crotch talk should we move on mm, that's it i can get my car experience oh your car experience yeah mm-hmm. um i'm going home from work one night and i something fell out of my pocket under my seat so i reached mm-hmm. down and the carpet's wet oh I'm like, that's weird why is my carpet wet so maybe i thought you know maybe i you know got drunk and peed myself right so <laughs> i just kind of dried it off and then I came back out later and the carpet was sitting in the sun all day and it was still wet and i go oh, that's something's wrong is this your newer of the yeah two the cars? newer vehicle okay the 2017 so and, and fortunately it's still under warranty so so anyway i took it in <laughs> And they start checking it out, and they're like, we can't find out what's wrong. And this, it's getting too late in the afternoon. Fortunately, I had the that rest of that day and the next day off. Then I said, Sunday, I got to be to work, so I need a, a car. Right. And he goes, well, it's not our policy to give rentals, but I'll talk to my boss. And I'm like, yeah, bullshit. Or then fix it. Either fix it or right. give me a fucking so give car. Me a, yeah, have it fixed by the time I go to work. But he called me a couple hours. Like, yeah, my boss said, yeah, you, we got a rental car for you, blah, blah, blah. Gee, golly, thanks. Yeah, so I got the rental car. And anyway, it took him uh, like three days to find out what was where the leak was coming from. He said, he said we took your all your seats out of your car. Oh, jeez. We took your carpet out. So it was down the side of your seat. Yeah, underneath it, yeah. Oh, underneath. And then he told me, he goes, no, he says the whole st- left side of your car was wet. I didn't realize it. And Transmission? He said, no, it, but it ended up to being, he, we checked everything. Finally, what they did, they because they, they asked, did you get your car washed? Go, yeah, I got it a few days ago. They go, oh, okay, we'll check on that. And then they checked where the, you know there might be a leak from the car wash for the undercarriage wash and all that. Yeah. And he's like, no, we don't think it's that. But then he, they went back to that. And so finally, what the mechanic did, he put it up on the racks, got a pressure washer, and started just spraying the shit out of the bottom of the car. And eventually, there's... A, little, I don't know, something that started leaking on the floor. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, so, weird. okay, so we patched it up, you know. Got, got your Fred Flintstone and... car, big hole in the middle. 
So yeah, it took them a few days to find it. How weird. Yeah, they were like, I kept calling them like, we're we're puzzled, we're stumped. I'm like, well, give me a new car. Yeah, yeah, I I always hate when I stump the uh, mechanic. Oh yeah, it's like that's that's the worst. I an older car I used to have always stumped the mechanic. It's like this is your job, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's funny. Yeah, good times. Yes, indeed. Uh, all right, old timey word of the week: disguised. Uh huh. Disguised yeah. means you're drunk. Oh. Get your disguise on. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like, I like that one. Yeah, that does pretty good. Like, incognito. Hey. Yeah, incognito. <laughs> <laughs> Had a few too many beers and put my disguise on and slipped on out of that place. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. So use that the next time you're trying to be classy, but talk about being hammered. No, officer, mm. I'm disguised. Exactly. Have you been drinking and driving? Nope, but I have been disguised and driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's not against the law. Disguised under the influence. Exactly. You got a DUI, sir. Uh, all right. That is the old time word of the week. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. Our Beer Babe of the Week, is her name is Ella. I hope I say that correct. E-L-L-E. I think that's Ella. Uh, you can find her on the Instagrams at sip on what. All one word, All no right. spaces, dots, dash. Sip on what. And in this one, she is drinking a tasty looking beverage from Discord Brewing. It's a sour IPA, something that I'm sure, oh my gosh, something I'm sure that these <laughs> gentlemen over here just want nothing sorry. to do with. No. Uh, I want to take a crack at it and say it's L. Ooh, Is it just L? Maybe. Could be. I, I went with that at first. I thought, no, it must be Ella, but mm. I, you're probably right. I have, I'm i the worst at pronouncing names, first of all, like yeah. the worst. I've seen so many names, dude. You're probably right. You're, uh, the, you're the Hispanic guy. You know. <laughs> That's true. Two L's make a a-ya. L sound. A-ya. A-ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true, though, but for work, you see a lot of names. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah. You are our new name expert. <laughs> There's like some crazy names, man. I oh, I imagine. Yeah. There was someone uh, named, uh, they're like, oh, I have a new employee. I'm like, oh, okay, what's his first name? It's like Remington. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and what's his last name? Steel. I go, <laughs> no. And I go, no, it no, isn't. No, no, I go, Is that no, his no. real name? Oh, go, yeah. No, come I go, on. That kid, that, she's like, what's wrong with it? She was like, you know. Doesn't get it yeah, at she's all. She's Filipino or something like that. <laughs> I was like, dude, there was a show back then. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how old his parents are. Yeah, couldn't yeah, believe it. Let's, it was, let's do this. Now. I think he was born in like '89 or something, so I kind of checked out. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Remington Steel. <laughs> that's too good. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, the, the employee's name is Brown. First name Emmett. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, that's pretty good. Mm. We should have a new segment like "Worst Name You've Heard All Day." Oh man, that'd be a good I'm one. I'm sure you get a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. Bring some of those names in. Okay. We'll uh, do. <laughs> all right. We have a new beer review from a new friend. This one comes to us from Mike, all the way up in Canada. A. Eh? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Mike, aka Sir Food Savage, from Midland, Ontario, Canada, here on the Unfiltered Gentleman's Podcast. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm here to review the El Segundo Brewing Company Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA, which was gifted to me from my homegirl, Allie in Cali. Shout out to Allie. It's a 6.7 ABV. It pours lager and pilsner clear. Like, it is clear as day. But once you take that first smell, lots of hops, lots of pine, that sip. Oh, you're just tasting pure pine. This is this is a great IPA. It makes sense because I don't think Steve Austin would ever put his name on a bad beverage. But shout out to El Segundo, Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA. Because if you guys are there, you need to get some Broken Skull. This is so good. This is my favorite IPA, and oh, it's so delicious, guys. So shout out. Thanks, boys, for having me, and uh, cheers. Give me a hell yeah! I said, give me a hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Hence the burp word of the week. Oh, hell yeah. oh. Yes. Thank you to Mike. You can find him on the grams at Sir Food Savage. All one word. Sir Food Savage. We uh, we, we met up because he's a friend with Allie and, uh, Allie and Callie. Excuse me. That was on the show a couple weeks ago. And we started talking. I was like, you should give us a review, too. He's, he's like, I'm sipping yeah, on a... Course. Uh, Steve Austin IPA right now. I was like, we should hear about it. And then I started thinking, I don't think we've had that one on the show yet. Not on the no, show. No, not on the show. No. I had it when it first came out, yeah. but it, it's mm-hmm. been a hot minute. So it I, we need to dig that one up. And, and it's a good IPA. It. it is a good right. IPA. I have to say it is good. 
revisit that one. Yes, that's the classy word for a refill. <laughs> and like he should revisit. notify Steve Austin because I listen to his podcast uh-huh. and every when he's promoting his beer every week, he says, "If you live out of California, you're shit out of luck." Oh yeah, so, unless somebody you know brought it to him from California. Well, he, uh, Allie and Kelly traded with them. Oh, uh, see, way. there it so, is. So, so yeah, it's he a is still thing. shit out of luck. So. Yeah, exactly. I knew Steve wouldn't lie to me. No, no, Steve's not a liar. No. He makes he, a great beer and he doesn't lie. And he he flipped me off a lot of times. He yes. won't he won't lie. <laughs> Kicked you in the gut. Yep. So uh, Stung all right, the hell out of me. Yeah. So go follow Sir Food <laughs> Savage on Instagram. Uh, he's drinking a lot of good beer up there in Canada, eh? I'm imagining you like laid out from a stunner now, <laughs> like beer all over you, like nom, 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 nom. <laughs> like waking up. <laughs> he has dreams like that every night. Yeah, man. Yeah. That would turn yeah. him into like Hulk Hogan. Like yeah. he's like all hulking up from the beer, right? <laughs> and yeah, then Stone yeah. Cold can't beat him anymore. Those are my wet dreams, but it's beer. <laughs> yeah, just dumping Steve Weisers on him. He starts hulking out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'd be awesome. I think we have a new video we need to shoot <laughs> for the website. <laughs> All right. I think it's time we make a call. Oh, yeah. He calls to the bullpen for beer. No diving head first on this one. <laughs> Careful out there, catchers. Thanks to uh, Shane from the Tailgate Party Talk podcast. We did a little trade. I sent him some beers from out here in California. He sent us some Texas beers. A few weeks back, we had the uh, Pappy Slocum Lager, if you recall, is that purple can. And this week, we're having another one he sent out. This is from Shannon Brewing Company. <laughs> it is their Moore IPA, and apparently Moore means big. Uh, of course, the lady friend found out that there was a Shannon Brewing Company in Texas, and she needed to have as much of their beer as possible <laughs> due to the namesake. Yep. Uh, so instead, we're drinking it on the show. Yeah, sorry. So this, maybe she'd be suing or something. Uh, she name. should be. Or yeah. She's going to yeah, yeah. be pissed. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Wedding's off. Everybody. Yeah. It's okay. We had the uh, Shannon Red on Beer Harmony, which she's oh. a big fan mm-hmm. of. There you go. She's not an IPA drinker, and as I drink this one, I can mm. tell that she would not be a fan. Mm-hmm. But this one, the more IPA, 6.5%, 65 IBUs, has a 3.67 on Beer Advocate and a 372 on Untapped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shannon Moore IPA, Moore is Irish for big, is an American style IPA full of yummy hop goodness. Yes. It is brewed to be a big celebration of aromatic hops. Warrior, Simcoe, Citra, and Amarillo to be exact. Most of the hop additions are done very late in the boil or added during primary fermentation. The dry hops are recirculated in primary to ensure a complex hop flavor and aroma without being too bitter. Look at all these hops. Look at them. Lots of hops. What do you gentlemen think of this one? There's like no bitterness to this, like in a good way. Like if there's anything, like I don't taste like the bite or like I just just like really smooth Mm -hmm. for an IPA. Yeah, I do. And it's not hazy. It's a very clear IPA. Uh, And usually you get a lot of that bite on the front. Mm -hmm. It's definitely down in the bitterness. It says 65 IBUs. It drinks much lower than that. Oh, my God. I do get a little bit of that pininess on the finish, mm-hmm. especially as it started to warm up a little bit, but yeah. uh, not a lot. Not oh a lot God. at all. It's, it's gone. Yeah. It's <laughs> Dan's good. evaporated. Yeah, it's gone. I don't know what happened oh to it. Oh, my one. God. It's good. Not another one. Not again. This this hot weather is just taking a toll on our oh beer. Rest in peace, beer. Yeah. <laughs> Give this man a beer. Dan's dry already. <laughs> uh, one thing to mention I wanted to talk about from Shannon Brewing is they do this thing. They, they call it like their fire brewing pos- process. They only brew with actual fire. They don't do electric heating or oh, anything wow. like that. And then they say it helps to bring out the caramelization and the malt. And uh, it's very not efficient, but uh, comes to, you know, has a better product in the end. So there's something different that they do. And cool. And Shane was very excited about that and, and about sharing some of that Texas beer. So thanks again to Shane. Tailgate Party Talk is where you can find the podcast as well as on social medias. And All right. I knew that because I listened to Beer Harmony. Ah, oh, you and the see? other million. Yeah, mm-hmm. everyone should go listen to Beer yeah, Harmony. That's right. Yes, You'd be sm- uh, as smart as me. Right. Uh, well, we're gonna cut that part. I don't know if that's yeah. a good endorsement. <laughs> yeah, just go listen to Beer Harmony. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, hit up some news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Yes, it is. Uh, Boston beer. And the Dogfish Head merger is now complete. We talked about this a month or two ago. Uh, and now it's finalized. Boston Beer Company's merger with Dogfish Head Craft Brewery officially closed on July 3rd. 
nearly two months after the top craft brewer companies announced that uh, n- announced their deal, according to documents filed with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. As such, Dockfish head co-founders Sam and Mariah Calione are now officially employees of Boston Beer Company, uh, according to an 8K. I'm not sure what that is. Sam Calione's title moving forward is founder and brewer of Dogfish Head. Additionally, Dogfish Head president and COO George Pastrana's title is now president of the Delaware Craft Brewery. Calione and Pastrana will both report to Boston Beer CEO David Berwick. So they're now one company. It's official. Yay, yay. <laughs> Don Dada's, man. That's I'm right. telling you. That is, uh, that's, that is huge. That's the, that's the family right there. Mm-hmm. They're... Oof a lot of beer making and a lot of money goddies of beer mm-hmm. don't Big time don't fuck with them that's right <laughs> they you know they might do what you had talked about craft beer becoming big beer i that, think so that whole uh loop this might be the ones that break through with that loop they make a powerful powerful family i think with maybe a couple others like i mean you imagine like i mean just you know, if they like linked up with say like firestone or something like right. that and it's like holy shit like it's like the United Nations built beer over yeah. here. They just signed Kauai. Now yeah, exactly. looking for that Paul George <laughs> trade. super team yeah, over here, dude. Looking for that Paul George trade and and maybe even like getting someone else on the back end yeah. with that one. That's that's what they've done over Big there. Big time. Mm-hmm. Super friends. Super friends, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um we like to talk about how ass backwards US Supreme Court laws are with alcohol, or just US laws with alcohol. The US Supreme Court strikes down a Tennessee residency requirement. I'm not going to read the details because it goes on and on and on. But the short of it is Tennessee had this whole thing where you couldn't open a store that sells alcohol unless you've been a resident of the state for two years. Oh, my God. That's the short of it. Nobody lives there for two years. Who the hell would want to? No kidding. No, those mobile homes get destroyed too fast. (laughs) Yeah, after two years, they're like, hey, buddy, you deserve it. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. one on us. (laughs) They give you your own store for free. (laughs) Um, So Total Wine and a small... Uh, entity sued to be able to open their own stores without having to live. Could you imagine like Total Wine CEO moves to Tennessee so they could open up a Total Wine there or something? <laughs> so silly. I'm glad that they struck it down. Well, thanks for uh, summarizing that too because you lost me at U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was afraid. Of. I figured I got to keep this as short as possible. Thanks. Uh, AB InBev Budweiser is now purchasing wine. I guess they're getting desperate because the beer sucks. <laughs> they're pushing deeper into their non-beer offerings, announcing that it's uh, innovative innovation and growth unit ZX Ventures. By the way, innovation and growth unit, great name for your junk. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Well, I already called yeah. it the Boomsticks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, they have acquired the remaining stake in Swish Beverages. Do you guys know who the Fat Jew is? Paul Heyman? <laughs> no, he is a Instagram celebrity. He calls oh. himself the Fat Jew. Anyways, he started the company, and, and Budweiser is now buying him out. No, not Paul Heyman. Oh. Paul Heyman. <laughs> Google it, bitches. <laughs> Best line ever. Uh, North Carolina has finally paved the way for alcohol sales at college sporting events. Nice. One by one, college sports getting booze. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper signed a bill into law last week making way for public universities and colleges, such as the University of North Carolina, North Carolina Carolina State, and East Carolina University, to immediately begin selling beer and wine at sporting events. The board of trustees at each university now must decide to approve alcohol sales and determine whether to allow beer and wine to be consumed in general seating areas. Well, now I might enjoy some uh, college sporting events. Yeah. Today, college, tomorrow, high school. Who knows what's next? Ooh, <laughs> you're going to find us at some <laughs> elementary school <basketball. laughs> Elementary beer yeah. sales. <laughs> Go unicorns. <laughs> drunk hitting on Mommy, the soccer moms. Mommy, can I moms. have my beer money? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Bell's Brewing. Bell's offers employees assistance in obtaining GEDs. Another example of uh, breweries doing the right thing. Yes, indeed. Well, it's Bell- only their fault. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Started early. <laughs> Bell's Brewery is making an effort to help employees without high school diplomas to pass the GED. The Michigan Craft Brewery is offering employees access to free tests, online study tools, and in-person advisors through the GED Works program. When we discovered a talent pool that was rich in passion and dedication but didn't meet the hiring requirements for some of our roles, we knew we needed to help fill that gap. Uh, Bell's Human Resources Services Human Resource Services Manager Emily Emily Schuling said, uh, "Bell employs more than 550 workers across 41 states. So uh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. 
Uh, thanks to Davis. You guys all remember Lister Davis. He sent the beer out from Colorado. Right? Yes. He sent us this article. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this needed to be a thing. Paps Blue Ribbon Hard Coffee is coming this month. Uh huh. Paps Blue Ribbon is stepping beyond their famed Blue Ribbon beer this year. There's currently a boozier version of PBR making its way to markets. As you read this, a PBR whiskey, which we've talked about where it's aged for five seconds. Uh, and now PBR Hard Coffee. Yeah. PBR Hard Coffee is a first for the company. The brewery uses Arabica and Robusta coffee beans, milk, and a touch of vanilla. The finished drink is 5% alcohol by volume. Paps Blue Ribbon has always been a brand that pushes boundaries and celebrates those who experiment and try new things. Hard Coffee is an uh, opportunity for us to pioneer a delicious and fun new drink and give America something unique. Yeah, we go. hope everyone loves it as much as we do. John Newhouse, PBR Brand Manager. Paps Blue Ribbon Hard Coffee will be available in limited select markets starting in July. Yeah. Well, the wife can look forward to it early morning beating now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, if you are drinking PBR, then I guess. <laughs> yeah. And, Get your wife and, beater on. Yeah. <laughs> now drink your wife beater, too. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's the way we're going. Uh, Corona has introduced new stackable cans in order to prevent pla the need of, of plastic rings to ah. keep the cans together. Ah. This seems like a great idea. Let's You can stack up to six cans, wow. so you can now make a portable baseball bat to beat your friends with <laughs> when you're hammered. <laughs> yeah. You can't stick that well, can it? It it locks. It's interlocked. Oh, wow. really? Yeah, it's kind of like nice. a Lego. Oh man! So yes, Whoa. unfortunately, it sticks very well. Ooh. Yes, uh, I am sure. Like as you hit somebody, it probably breaks apart. But uh, I have a feeling it doesn't feel good. That's pretty cool. It is until someone gets hurt. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know they're gonna do it. Oh yeah, drink their PBR coffee and then get that right. <laughs> then go get a stackable get six pack. Oh, sta stackable. Yeah, yeah it's, it's over. It, it's all over from yeah. There. Uh, all right, I talked about it earlier. Growler and Crowler Education. This comes to us from craftbeer.com. So I thought I'd run down some of the highlights from this article on how to keep your Growler and Crowler fresh, when to drink, how to store, etc. Uh, when buying a Growler, ask if the glass Growlers offered are pressure rated. I didn't notice the thing. Mm. Or if there are any other Growler offerings specifically approved for carbonated beverages. Avoid, too, avoid filling, uh, overfilling. While a little more beer seems like a bonus, overfilling a growler can increase the chance of a glass growler failure. Ensure your server leaves at least 5% of headspace in the growler. Mm. I guess they don't want it to explode. Uh, three, encourage the use of, plastic, use of plastic screw caps instead of metal caps, as it's believed a plastic cap will fail before the glass does. So you use a metal one. If something goes on too much pressure, the glass breaks. Oh, wow. Or if you use a plastic one, just the cap breaks. Shit, that is oh. pretty smart. Yeah, I've never had that. Interesting. Yeah, never come across that. Uh, of course, keep growlers in a cool, dark space. Five, when reusing growlers, do your part to clean the growler and inspect it for damage. Contamination may start a re-fermentation of the beer that's in the growler, which, of course, creates more pressure. Uh, crowlers. Have we all had crowlers? Big cans that you you know fill oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love a good crowler. Uh, crowlers are an aluminum can substitute for glass growlers. Most often hold smaller quantities of beer, generally 32 ounces. Uh, but don't confuse crowlers for beer cans. They aren't necessarily packaged the same way, making the shelf life of a crowler limited like a growler. Be sure to keep crowlers cold and drink fresh within two to three days. Hmm. I thought crowlers would last like a week. Because I know growlers, like you got a couple days to drink a growler. Yeah, do it up. Yeah, I thought you had like a week on a crowler because of the can. So this I actually learned a little bit. Hmm. And then with kegs, this is something I never really thought of. Uh, kegs require a plan. Many consider draft beer the closest thing to beer from the brewery at home. Stainless steel kegs, as part of a draft system, dispense beer in a far greater amount than any other beer container. While this is an obvious plus, especially for a party, drawbacks include the need for a dispense plan as well as more space and energy to keep the beer cold. The need for a plan to extract beer from the kegs is compounded by the need for a balanced draft system that yeah. dispenses a beer with the right amount of foam to each pour. In a pinch, uh, a large bucket of ice and party pump are perfectly acceptable ways to cool and dispense beer, especially for a party. That said, many party kegs end up being plagued with excess for most of the party. Here's some don'ts for party kegs. Don't pick up the keg the same day as your party. The oh, jostling yeah. that'll happen as you transport the keg from brew pub to the party will cause a lot of foam. The keg needs at least 24 hours to settle. Wow. I didn't think about that. I didn't know Me that. neither. Yeah. Don't leave the keg warm. As beer warms, the pressure increases and results in overly foamy beer. I have experienced that. I talked about it at the wedding I went to North Carolina. 
They delivered the kegs the night before. They did not keep them cool. It was mm. not cold at night. The first half of that thing was foam. It was oh, awful. Oh, man, it sucks. Yeah, it's like watching fallen soldiers just <laughs> knocking out one at a time. Just cups of beer being dumped. Mm. Three, don't over pump or pressurize the keg. Before pumping the keg tap, release some pressure to see if it might pour fine. Not everyone needs to pump the keg before pouring a beer. Mm. So there you have it. Ways to make sure your keg, your crowler, and your growler are as uh, usable, usable and uh, friendly as possible. Don't screw it up, people. This is important. Yeah, yeah. it's beer. This it's is very educational. Exactly. So not to get all serious yeah. on everybody, I but think, I, th- I think, think we, we all, all learned something. Yeah. I didn't. I never thought about like, oh, you get a keg. You don't want to get it right before your party starts. Which yeah. I think a lot of people do. Like, oh, we oh, got yeah. a party Definitely. Tonight. Let's go get the keg. I've know? done it. I'm guilty of it. Yeah. I've gone and picked yeah. up a keg for a yeah. party like in an hour. You know, like, hey, I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, this is fresh. fresh oh, boy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I, something I never really thought, but it makes total sense. Yeah, it does. But then you got to keep it cool. That too. Yeah, I've, I've done it the old school way, like with ice. And then overnight, I put a bunch of ice on and just hoped it would stay. And then in the right. morning, like dump more ice on it. Like it's, <laughs> it's a pain in the ass and you go through a lot of ice. But yeah, uh, it could be. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, and then in my situation where yeah. I got the keg 24 hours before and then by the time the party started, there's no beer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, Oops. Got to get more. That's, Sorry, That's guys. also a problem. Yeah. 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 Probably, probably best to invest in some uh, stackable cans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That way people get out of hand. You can beat the shit out of them. <laughs> that's those. right. Yeah. Those, get away from the keg. <laughs> yeah. Those, those unruly guests. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Beer jousting. <laughs> yeah <laughs> beer chicken yeah oh god yeah that would be great i should not have those at my wedding Stackable oh no cans they just get out of hand it would be oh bad. yeah it would. you know we are gonna get cakes the plan is at this point to have cakes for the wedding i now will have oh. to get them a, a day ahead you I got rules. maybe i can make it after all <laughs> did i say kegs <laughs> i meant wine coolers <laughs> sorry my bad you're Oops. gonna have now you're gonna have bridezilla and beerzilla over here <laughs> yeah <laughs> We'll be jousting at the altar. <laughs> yeah. Is that beer cold? <laughs> I said to keep icing it. <laughs> Imagine. This is at least 60 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get this 24 hours ago? Yeah. My beer needs to be perfect. It's my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I could see me doing that. <laughs> what time was this delivered? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean yesterday? What time yesterday? Uh-huh. It's five o'clock now. Was it delivered at five o'clock yesterday? At like nine o'clock <laughs> yesterday? Does it need more time to sit, motherfucker? Beerzilla. Yeah, that'd be yeah, me. Yeah. It's going to be funny. Bright Zilla and Beer Zilla. It's probably going to come true. Mm. I can imagine. Hey, guys, you got to wait till 9 o'clock to drink this beer. I don't think... Uh, yeah. Hey, we're thirsty. Yeah. What's, when's the beer being yeah, served? Uh, well, the... they were late dropping it off, so 9.07. <laughs> yeah. 9.07. <laughs> and the widower, uh, Mrs. Jones, is living comfortably now. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's taking all my money. Yes. Oh, man. As, since I passed. Since you were killed, holding, trying to keep yeah. people away from the keg. It was, it was a big crowd with pitchforks. <laughs> yeah. Stackable, stackable cans. Yeah. Stackable. He got killed with a stackable yeah. can. Torches and stackable cans. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, get the ogre. <laughs> so, all right. Sorry, everybody. We'll, we'll stop now. You're welcome. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for joining along. Don't forget to find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at the unfiltered gentleman, except for Twitter at unfiltered gents. You can drunk dial us 805-538-BEER-2337. We won't judge you. Give us a drunk dial, leave a voicemail and uh, make sure you're all staying hydrated, I think. Mm-hmm. And stay cool. It's hot. And uh, yeah. don't forget to duck cover and roll. <laughs> duck cover and hold that's for a fire yeah yeah something like that Uh, get under something get under something yeah so everyone's out there stay hydrated and on that note good night everybody (laughs) 